At least once a week, geologists from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, or HVO, take a helicopter to an active lava flow on the Kilauea volcano to collect data and samples. Sampling is a crucial means of monitoring lava temperatures and volcano activity. Potentially, it can also save thousands of lives. Today's site happens to be in the Royal Garden subdivision that's been slowly buried by more than 37 square miles of lava over the last 25 years. We're standing right over Royal Street, which is at the base of, uh, right at the base of Royal Garden subdivision. And Royal Street was covered by this lava you see here uh, over the last week. So a week ago, this was a road surface. Now it's a field of Pahoy Hoy and A'a. Pahoy Hoy and A'a are the two primary types of Hawaiian lava. Pahoy Hoy is faster flowing, ropey fluid lava, while A'a is slower, very rough and chunky. As the geologists search for a good lava sampling spot, they carefully walk across the weak old 200 degree Fahrenheit surface, sometimes only a few feet above 2,000 degree active lava. As long as you don't get too cocky, if you don't have fear and caution within you, that's when you're going to get tagged by the volcano. The Kilauea volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii is often considered the most active volcano in the world. Scientists from all over the world take advantage of Kilauea's almost continuous lava flows to better understand the super hot world of volcanoes. You can see that channel over there, so let's yeah. walk around. The reason why volcanoes exist is that they're structural points of weakness in the crust that allows the molten core to rise up. Rising molten rock, called magma, comes up through vents extending more than 37 miles down to a simmering hot spot fed by the Earth's molten core, more than 1,800 miles below. Besides Kilauea, the vents can supply magma to Mauna Loa, the largest volcano on Earth, and a new submarine volcano called Loihi. You couldn't have an Earth or any of the other planets if it wasn't for the molten activity. Understanding the physics of volcanoes has taken off. And so the instruments in order to monitor volcanoes have also become more sophisticated. These instruments include a thermal camera called FLIR, one method of measuring the temperature of the active lava. The active A'a and Pahoehoe is on the order of six or 700 degrees uh, Celsius on the exterior. And on the interior, of course, it's very much hotter. It's on the order of 1,100 degrees C. Once you get close to the lava, then just the heat kind of reminds you that it's a dangerous place. So you become more cautious, just kind of automatically. We wear Nomex suits. They're required for our helicopter ride, but they offer the added benefit of being protective against lava. Absolutely wear leather gloves. They also wear heavy boots to keep their feet out of a hot situation. And we usually, if we're very close, we put on a face mask and sunglasses to cover our face. Geologist Matt Patrick locates a good spot for lava sampling. We're going to this active breakout, and we're going to get a sample. The reason we sample is so that we can measure the, uh, the chemical composition. This tells us about the magmatic plumbing system. Now it's changing over time. And I'm going to use the water to chill or quench the sample. That freezes uh, the lava as it was in the system. If you let it cool too slowly, then it basically permits secondary crystallization that kind of obscures the signal that we're looking for. I'm shielding my face just because of the radiant heat is intense. Um, we call these toes. As you can see, the lava, the way it extrudes and flows in Pohoihoi is that it just comes out in small toes, as you can see here. The crust chills very quickly and becomes brittle, but the inside is still moving and stretching, so the brittle crust just gets uh, basically uh, snapped off. But this whole flow you see here, which is only a week old, is really the incremental result of numerous toes such as these, working day and night, slowly invading the landscape. 
as you can see, it's incandescent. It's coming right through this, from this tube. It's very hot on the order of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is four or five times the temperature of your oven. Yeah, it's very hot when you're this close. It's like, the consistency is like thick molasses, as you can see. As soon as you do this, your discomfort level increases exponentially. As the lava cools for a couple of minutes, Matt takes GPS readings to attach to the samples. At this point, we've put the GPS waypoint on the bag and the, and the date and the name of the sampler and the location, and we just transfer it into our little sample bag. After a hot day in the field, Matt is back to the safety of the HBO, observing his thermal images, many of which were filmed from the helicopter. Flow field is very expansive, and often with the naked eye, it's difficult to tell which areas, which portions are active and which are inactive. The thermal camera gives us a very quick synoptic view of where activity is localized, but a more accurate view of the hazards and the hazardous areas. These are the samples that we collected earlier today, and these fragments that were chilled uh, in the water. And the next step is mailing these off to our colleagues on the mainland at the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Washington State. And they're going to use XRF, or, which is X-ray fluorescence, to basically measure the chemistry, the composition. This analysis can tell the scientists not only the composition of the lava, but also its source, age, and molten temperature. And that's important because if things are changing, then that may be a prelude to changes in the eruption style. And changes in eruption style could mean danger for those living in nearby communities. To further monitor eruption activity, the HVO uses various time-lapse cameras across the volcano, recording day and night. We certainly can't control the power of Earth's volcanoes, but with tools like these and vigorous sampling, we now have an excellent chance of knowing when to get out of their super hot path.